Philippians 4 and verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4 and verse 8. My memory word says Philippians 4, 8, and it says, Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good. Philippians 4 8. Finally, you brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4 8. Finally. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are sure. true, whatsoever things are um. honest, whatsoever things are just, just. whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are Lovely. only, whatsoever what? things are good report, if there be any virtue. If there be any way, hey, think on these things. Philippians 4 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We pray that you have enjoyed our Hidden Truth segment where our young people have sent in their memory verses of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. God has given to us another uh, beautiful scripture, one of those uh, smooth stones uh, that have been taken from the water of life and have been given to us that we might be able to conquer the Goliath of evil thoughts 
and be the champion that God has called us to be. When we look at Philippians 4 and verse 8, we find a beautiful passage that shows us that God has given us many uh, things that we can commit to memory that will be a strength and a blessing to us. Before we go into our study for this morning, why don't we have a word of prayer? Father in heaven, again, I thank you for your grace and for your love and your mercy. We thank you for another beautiful morning, another beautiful week. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us and to bless us and keep us. This morning we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to say happy Sabbath again to all of our young people out there and all of our parents who are tuning in uh, this morning. Uh, we pray that, again, our study today that would find a blessing for you. You know, as I was thinking about this particular passage, Philippians 4 and verse 8, something actually stood out to me that I did not consider before. And I want us to look at that just now. And I want us to notice here, Philippians 4 and verse 8. It says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. And the Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, now when you look at that particular passage, how many things have God, has God given to us to think on? You're right. If you answered eight, you are right. You know, throughout the Bible, eight is a symbol of a new beginning. It's a symbol of a new beginning. And when we use these eight things um, for our uh, uh, Christian growth, and brothers and sisters, God is showing us that we have a new beginning, that we are allowing these to be the criteria for the way in which we live our lives. You know, oftentimes we spend a lot of time focusing on what we ought not do rather than spending the majority of our time on what we can do. And we often hear a lot about, um, you know, and I had to find, I had to catch myself because oftentimes I spend a lot of times telling my children, no, no, we can't do this. No, we're not here. No, we can't do that. No. And very little of yes. And brothers and sisters, oftentimes we can become very discouraged uh, and discouraging to young people as they are constantly hearing from us, no, we cannot, no, we cannot, rather than constantly looking for what can we do? What can be done in the place of this? What can be done in the place of the video games? What can be done in the place of the card playing? What can be done in the place of the competitive sports that seeks to stir up competition and strife where we want to conquer rather than assist and help. What can be put in these places? And when we began to start looking throughout God's wonderful creation, we can find many things that we can put in place of those things. When you think about it in the Garden of Eden, God had given man a restriction. He says, you cannot eat from the tree which is in the midst of the garden, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. But what often is not focused on is all of the trees that God said that man could eat from. And the enemy of man and God led man to focus all of his attention and energy upon that one restriction. And, made, and led them to ignore every tree that they may eat from. Because that one tree, God says, for the day you eat thereof, it would bring death. But what he did not tell them, that if you eat from 
all of those other trees, it would bring and it would sustain life. And so when we start to focus our attention, not upon what we cannot do, but let's focus our attention on what we can do and those things which we cannot, they will be so clear and we would see the harm that they really produce. When you look at these things in Philippians 4, 8, we don't see a lot of, as a matter of fact, when you look at it, there is, God is not telling us what we cannot do, but he is simply giving us instructions on what we ought to do and what we can do. As a matter of fact, let's look at those again. Philippians 4 and verse 8. Let's look at these eight things. The Bible says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. All right. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, what does God say? Think on these things. Now, brothers and sisters, I would like for us, I want to challenge our young people, our parents, and I want to give you an assignment. I want you this coming week to find something that fits the criteria of these eight things. Now, that means that parents are going to have to start thinking, what, what are some things that are true and honest and just? And we want you to encourage your children as well to look for things that will fit this criteria. Now, you may not be able to find all eight uh, in one week. You may not think of them all. But I want you to think of some things that fit this that fits this criteria. And when you find it, I also want you to um, make a note on how can this help you be a better brother or a better sister, a better son or better daughter? How can you be a better friend? And when you do, I want you, uh, you can either email us at EG Bible School. Uh, parents, you may have to type out um, what they find. Um, and if you are comfortable uh, sending, us a, sending us a video um, um, in place of your memory verse, uh, you can do that as well. We don't, it doesn't have to be long. It could be anywhere from a minute, no longer than two, but just to share with us, what have you found that falls in, falls in line with what is true, what is honest and just or, or virtuous or lovely, uh, something that is praiseworthy. Um, I want to challenge you because God wants us to start looking at things that will change our characters to be more like him, that by beholding, we become changed. And we can see all the evil in the world. <clears throat> we can see all the negativity in the world. But by beholding it, we will become just like it. But what about the honest things that God has left in the world for us? What about the pure things that God has left here for us? What about the true and lovely and virtuous things that we can testify about? What about those things? Because if we began to look at those things, then, you know, we will find ourselves in the company of others. We will, we will always, we will constantly, out of habit, focus on things that are pure. We'll be around people and they'll be talking <clears throat> and they may be not complaining, but they may be going over some of the negative things that have happened in their lives. But because we have learned to look upon things that are lovely, that are pure, that are honest, that are praiseworthy. Naturally, we will begin to turn their minds to the things of God. So brothers and sisters, again, this passage presents to us, it opens to us a fountain 
of life. And brothers and sisters, I believe that God wants us to drink deep from it. So I want to challenge our parents as well as our young people that as we go throughout this coming week and we can even start this Sabbath day. I know some of us um, watch a live stream and some of us. So many of some of us have an opportunity to go out in nature. And I want to challenge you to think about and find some things that are pure and lovely and that fits the criteria of these eight blessings that God has given to us. You know, brothers and sisters, again, it has been truly a blessing to be able to worship in this capacity. We want to encourage our young people as well as our parents to allow that word to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. So until we meet again, we want to say God bless. And as we sign out from Children's Corner, uh, we look to have fellowship with you in our midday service at 11 uh, 15. So until then, may God bless Maranatha.